Katie Akins, and I am with the Arizona Farm Bureau Agriculture in the Classroom program. And we're excited to have you guys join us here for this virtual tour. Um, we are going to be making our first stop uh, with the virtual tour at Coronado, Fa Coronado Farms, which is in uh, Wilcox, Arizona, Cochise County. Um, as just a, a housekeeping thing for everybody who's coming on, if when you are viewing the screen, if you are starting to see everybody's waffle pictures and that's distracting to you because you cannot um, see the pictures on the screen, that's going to be a fix on your end. And so all you're going to need to do is um, in your in your grid, find the picture that says Mariah White. She's going to start talking here in just a moment. And if you pin her, so click right click on her video or hit the three dots and say pin video, it'll pin hers. And so that then will be the only person that you see throughout the course of the tour so you don't get distracted by anyone else. At this point, if you have any questions that come up as we move through the tour, um, I am just going to ask that you go ahead and type it in the chat yeah. function box. Okay, if you type it in the chat function box, I will then be able to um, uh, ask the question to Mariah for you as we move forward. So Mariah, we still have people coming, believe it or not. This is super exciting. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and let you get started as um, I keep letting people join into our, our session here. So I would like to introduce everybody to uh, Mariah White. Hi guys. So um, thanks for joining us today with the virtual tour. Um, I was super excited when he asked me to do this. Um, so my job here at Coronado is I actually do tours. We normally have tours on farm. Um, and because of everything we haven't really been having a lot of tours, so it's really exciting for me to um, get to visit with you guys. And so my job is community relations and educational outreach with Riverview. And so I, I don't know what Katie does, I go into classrooms here in, here in the Cochise County area. Um, I do field trips. I get kids on the farm to do on the farm labs. Um, I was actually an ag teacher, an agriculture teacher. Um, in high school, I taught for six years here in Wilcox, and then I joined with, I've been with Riverview just over three years. So that's a little bit about, and then we're going to show you a video that kind of gives an overview of Riverview, and then I'll talk about it afterwards, and then we'll go into the tour. So. began as a family farm in Midwest Minnesota back in 1939 and it started how most farms start in that it was a way to make a living and then also a way to provide opportunity for the next generation. The strategy was a simple one in that it started with a foundational land and taking that land and growing a crop on it, taking that crop and feeding it through livestock and then taking the manure and applying that back onto land and then doing as many of those pieces as possible, which makes for a very efficient system. As you look at Riverview today, it's still the same thing. Still the land to consumer model as a strategy and still being able to provide a culture of opportunity for passionate people and innovative ideas.
Our core values are the heart of Riverview's culture. Having and living the core values is extremely vital to keep our reputation and the community's trust. Our core values support our mission and strategies. Having a strong reputation and trust will help us grow and provide a cultural opportunity for passionate people and innovative ideas. Okay, so in the video you saw that we're based out of we're based in five states. Um, so we do uh, farming. We also have beef cattle, um, and we do a lot of farming of our own farming to feed our animals. Yeah. And then we also um, do we have a our own construction. So when we build a new farm or when we're doing repairs on current farms, um, we have our own construction team. And so we have a lot going on. But today we're going to talk mostly about um, Coronado, which is our farm here in Wilco south of Wilcox, and its primary is that it's the heifer system. So a heifer is a young female um, cow that are bovine that has never had a baby. Um, we have all of our heifers are consolidated right here in Arizona, and the reason that we're here in Cochise County is because our, of the climate, because the weather is so phenomenal to raise our heifers, and so we can really do a good job getting nice, strong vigorous, hef healthy heifers, and we actually, on this system, we take, take them from basically birth all the way until um, they're cattle. But at Coronado, we just do the raising, and so we're going to talk about that. So Katie, you can go ahead and go to the next slide, next video. So, this is just going down the row here of the calves. So the calves come to Coronado um, when they're 90 days old. Um, and they're in small pins. You can see there, there's about 30 head per um, And this is a really critical time for the calves. So um, if they need doctored, so that one had some pink paint on its on its hip, then that means it was it had been doctored in the last day. Um, so as we look at them, you can see they're small, they're young, they're only three months old. They come to us weighing about 200 pounds. We're gonna keep them on the farm until they're pregnant. And so, um, so these girls are, it's really important that the pins are clean and that we clean the waters and they're learning social interactions. Cows have social hierarchy and so they have to learn how to interact and that's how we start them in pins of 30 and then um, increase that up to um, as many as, uh, and then it, it And uh, so this is the so this is just that area here. You can see that they've got shade when they're this young. They need shade. You're going to see in some later that they don't have when they get older. They don't need shade. But these guys are pretty little, and so um, they do need some shade for some protection. And then um, also one of the things you might see on the on the very bottom of this, the video there, you can see there's water standing. And that's because we clean our waters once a week. So clean water is really important for cow, for cow health, cattle health. And so that's actually my coworker coming up 
Um, he's cleaning waters now. He works on the breeding team, but they got done early, and so they pitched in to help clean waters. So even though we're a big farm, we're still, we're still like a family farm. So when there's work to do, we have to help out. And so there's Ruben waving. Hi, Ruben. Um, and so that's kind of, that's the kind of sums up that, that, that heifer system. We're going to look at another video here in a second. And you guys will see there's some different major differences that happen um, in that system. And so you can also see the pins are not. That's a big thing. So go ahead and play the next video, Katie. Um, really quick, I just want to, um, in case people are having a, a hard time seeing the video, um, if you have seen Mariah White's video, if you hit the corner button on that video, it will go full screen for the vi video and it will make Mariah smaller. So hopefully that will help you through. And just a reminder, my friends, if you could stop unmuting yourself, I'd appreciate it. Okay, here we go. So this is our growers area here at the Parrot Coronado Farm. So this is where our young heifers come. They arrive here when they're anywhere between 85 and 90 days old. And they're put into these pins here. So you can see these dairy heifers. These ones have been here a couple weeks. Um, each pin has its own number so that, for example, let's say this little brown heifer was out of her pin. I could be like, hey, there's a loose heifer in front of pin 1454. Or um, if there's a sick calf. So if I'm giving a tour and I see a calf that maybe doesn't look like she's feeling very good, I can just call my coworkers and say, hey, there's a ca sick calf in pin 1453. I think it needs doctored and it didn't have the pink mark, which the calves that we doctor get little pink marks, so we know that they got treated. Um, and so these girls come here as about three months old, and they're going to stay here for about eight weeks. So the reason that the pins are so small is, and there's only 30 head in here, is because the cows are social creatures, so they have to learn how to share space. They came out of individual hutches, and now they're having to share feed bunk space and waters, and kind of develop their social hierarchy and and establish themselves in the group and then after they're here then they get moved over further um, over to the transition area so and then across the way here um, we've got some beef builder calves so these calves are actually just close enough to size they're going to get shipped out um, so the beef builders have the pink tags and they're going to be both heifers and steers and they're a cross between our dairy cows that we saw in the parlor and um, a beef bull that's limousine influence. We've been working on those genetics for quite a while now. And so what we end up with is a really great beef animal. And so they'll leave here and go to a feedlot and become part of the beef food, ch the beef chain. So they'll become carne asada and cheeseburgers and all that good stuff. So these calves are roughly weighing about 500 pounds and that's usually when we ship them out. But they arrive to us just like the dairy heifers um, they're going to arrive over here. You see, these calves just came in yesterday. When I'll give Katie just a second to get over here. <laughs> it's okay. You don't want to make people think. Um, so these calves just show, just arrived yesterday. And so these are those same beef calves, same genetics. They're just a lot younger. So these calves are 80 days old. Um, and again, notice they're starting out in pins of 30. Um, and then as they get bigger, we'll go ahead and open those pins before it's time to ship them um, to the feedlots. And one thing I want to point out, if Katie, if you'll get down here on the concrete, they're eating different feeds. So this, these calves are eating the exact same stuff that they were eating at the hutches there at, at um, Turkey Creek. So the same feed stuff, it looks sort of like a sweet feed, um, lots of grains in them. You can see there's, you can even see the bits of corn there. Um, got, it's got lots of molasses in it. My hands will be sticky now. Um, but it's just like what they were eating over at Turkey Creek. And so rather than have so many changes, new pin, new friends, and new food, we give them this for about a week. And then we'll switch them over to our grower ration, which is the ration right next to it. Now it's got, there's a little spillage here, but let me see if I can stir it up. You can see it's still got lots of goodies in it, but now we've introduced that forage to it. And so that's gonna help those calves better develop that rumen um, so that they can break down and do their magical superpower, take grass and turn it into, into steaks. 
So you can see these caps are little and they, they have shade. Um, we're lucky in Wilcox, our, our climate's pretty moderate, so we don't need shade for our older animals. Um, but our little guys, they get some shade. And so, and they're real vocal because they just got here yesterday. And so they might not even be in the same pen with a friend that they were next to. And then once one starts, they all start. So that is the growers. Mariah, really quick before you start, we had um, a question that maybe in your talkings you can um, uh, answer. But so you said in, in the video that those, um, those calves just got there yesterday uh, when we filmed. And um, the question is kind of how long are they going to stay there with you guys before they go to the feedlot and then how long do they stay there before they enter the food chain the human food chain for the hamburgers and carne asadas like you talked about okay yeah i'll go ahead and answer that question right now because we don't really talk about beef again um so these calves are so they basically get to us when they're about three months old at the beef calves and then um, they're going to stay with us till they're six seven months old so they're really only with us about th about three months and then they eventually then um, go to a feedlot and then they'll stay at that feedlot. Um, these calves usually roughly oh, 10 minutes before they're, before they're ready to go to, to, go to, to um, the human food chain. So that's, if that, hopefully that answered the question. Um, so this is a little bit different than like the traditional beef food feed chain or the, you know, the food chain where those calves are on pasture because these calves are dairy cross calves and so they spend most of their life in the feedlot. Awesome. Thank you. The area. All right. So I love that Katie has flight titles as a teenager. So these guys, you can see this is a training area. So if you look right here and um, Katie, if you want to pause that video real quick, that'd be great. Um, and so Right here, there's two different types. So this is that transition area I was talking about earlier. And so there's two different types of head gates. So the growers, when they're little, when they first get here, they have these ones that don't move. So these are really easy for the cows to put their heads in and out. And they're not scary, or not really scary, but they move. these ones though, they actually move. And so um, they're actually, they're gonna be, the calves are kind of scared. And so this is a time when the calves can transition between um, actually, you know, be, whether just don't have to have the movie thing and then they go to the one that moves because later they have all, that's the only way they can get food is they have to go through that because that's where we, when we, when we do any treatments with the, with the animals, that's where it is in the pens. So they have to be willing to put their head through the moving one. So go ahead and you can play it the video, Katie. Um, and so these, these again, these calves are gonna be, um, it's kind of that transition piece. So they're in pens of 200. So, all right, next one. So we breed out here in the pens. And so the way we do that is we let the heifers run out of feed. And then when the feed truck comes, right before the feed truck comes, our guys are gonna come up down, our breeding team, they're gonna come down and they're gonna flip this lever here and then you can see when those shepherds put their heads in and they put their heads down to go to eat that's going to lock them. and then they're in a headlock and so they can't back out and pretty quick all the heifers along the way here are going to be locked in and then the guys can safely go in and breed as needed as needed um, and then when they're done all they have to do and it's this whole row both sides of me here when they're done breeding that pen, all they have to do is they just put that lever back down and all the heifers get let go at the same time. Mariah, can you touch really quick on um, what the cows are eating there? They could kind of see the food in the bunks. Yeah, what absolutely. Some of the different ingredients. Sure, so yeah, so the, um, the calves at this stage, so these girls are old enough to be bred, so they're at least 10 months old. And so now they've really become, they're really, their rumen is fully developed. Cows are ruminant, so they have a four compartment stomach. And so um, we've got silage. Um, and actually, these, the heifers eat a lot of wheatage. So anytime when you're talking about feedstuffs for cows, if you hear that edge at the end, so wheatage, haylage, um, silage, 
that means it's been fermented. It's, it's basically pulled and preserved. And so it's a grass. So corn, you know, corn's, corn's a big grass and wheat's a grass and then alfalfa hay is not a grass, but it's done the same way. And so those are all forages. And so the cows are eating that and then it's mixed with sources of protein and energy. So there's a little bit of ground corn in there. And then there's also um, um, DDG and soybean meal. DDG is dried distillers grains and it actually comes from the from ethanol production and ethanol and so it's a byproduct. So it's just a waste product, but the cows can eat it and get a lot of protein from it. So and then of course um, soybean meal is a byproduct of the soy industry as well. So that's kind of a rundown of what's in the feed. All right, so this, this video, Katie's gonna go ahead and push play, but this video just shows the cows in their pins. A um, couple of things to look out for is they're, they're very mouthy. So you might see that one, go ahead and pause it, Katie, so you can see her, she's a little crazy. But they like to lick, and it's not because they're deficient in anything or even really even boredom, because the, those kind of cows will do that out in the pasture too. It's just a Jersey cow trait. They're just kind of weird. And so because we milk Jerseys and Holsteins, um, all of our, even our crossbreds like to keep our fences nice and clean for us. And so you'll notice we have to have specialized gate closures. Um, and that's also, I had Katie stop here. So it just goes through here. It's got another loop and that thing, it's almost like a necklace. Some of the necklaces close that way. So that if those cows are licking that chain, they can't let themselves out. So we'll go ahead and um, go ahead and play the video, Katie, and we'll keep keep going here. And Mariah, are you going to mention the difference between Jersey and Holstein? Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll do that when we get to the parlor where they can really see the size difference. Um, and so these girls are fed as much as they want to eat. Um, one of the things about dairy cows is they've got to be fed as much as they want to eat. And also, you, you might see it looks like they're standing water. And so Ashley, the the 12 feet behind the feed bump is a, is an, is a lane that where we can flush with water. And we'll, I'll talk about that in a little while, but where the water is recycled and gets flushed and it takes all the manure out with it. And so that they, where they stand to eat is nice and clean. And so these girls, their feed's a little bit different. They've got a lot more corn, a lot more energy into their feed, um, just simply because they're having to produce a lot of, they're using a lot of energy to produce milk. And you'll notice they have shade because um, because they're eating so much food um, and they're and they're changing converting that food into milk, they produce a lot of internal heat. And so even though our climate's mild, we still need to have shade for these mil these milking girls. And so you'll see um, just basically right now these girls are just eating and hanging out and chilling. And then in a little while they'll get they'll go in to feed. And in fact, when we were filming. Right before Katie left, this pin was going in to be fed, and they were like, woohoo, it's time to get milk, or to be milk, not fed, sorry. And they were all excited to get milked. Um, so go ahead and we'll go to the next slide. That's gonna be our, um, our milking parlor. And you can see, so the, some of these cows right here, these black and white spotted ones, these are our Holstein cows, and they're kind of big. They've got a great big, huge frame, and they give a lot of milk. And then right here, is a little brown Jersey cow. I don't know if you guys can see that, but she's little bitty. She's way smaller than the cows next to her. And they're a lot smaller. And so they give less milk, but it has more fat in it. And so that's why we like the crossbreds. So this carousel is a 90 cow carousel. Um, the cows are on there for a total of seven and a half minutes. They come on on the back over there and then they, they, the milker gets put on and we'll look at some footage of that. And, um, and then they just go for a little ride and get milked out. And then the milker comes off on the backside. Um, we're also doing heat detection and breeding in, the, in here. You'll notice there's fans that are nice and keep the cows nice and And we have the sound muted, but in the parlor, one of the biggest important things is we like to keep it super calm, super chill in there. And so it'll always be like just real quiet. You never hear people yelling. And then here's a view from the inside of the of the parlor um, and you can see all the milk ends up right here in this in this mini milker piece um, and that eventually so at one minute from leaving the cow before it goes into the bulk tank it gets cooled and it starts out 100 degrees coming out of the cow and it's going to cool to 38 degrees 
And so you can see the cows are like, what are you guys doing down there? Because normally there's not people in the middle of the carousel, but Katie and I got to be special that day. So, and here's a view of the milkers just on the cows. Um, you can see that milk, those milking cloths, there's, um, there's four, four claws basically because a cow has four teeth. And so um, those get hooked on and they, they pulsate. You can't really see it in the video, but they're actually like pulsating and that actually mimics the, the calf. And so that's what, how the milk comes out or if you were milking. So um, that's the milking machine. Um, these, this is, these are the automatic takeoffs here on the back. Um, you can see that the, this is where the, the machine, the milkers are getting popped off by this little simple machine. And then the cows get the teat wand goes in there. So this is an automatic teat wand. Used to, we had to do that by hand, but now we have this automated system. And so that was actually able to, one of, one of our biggest challenges is that we can't find people that want to work in the milking parlor. And so um, that was actually able to make us go from a four man crew to a three man crew, just by having the, the teat wand and the automatic takeoff, we were able to do that. And Mariah, really quick, before you go to the next one, um, somebody asked what the numbers on the cow's ears mean. Can you address that? Okay, yeah, us? absolutely. So, um, and I'll get into that a little more later, but um, every cow has, that's their identification. That's like their name almost. And so I might say, um, you know, I might see a cow that doesn't look right or maybe that's out and I can be like, hey, cow number 375873 is out. You need, or you know, or she's sick or she's, she needs you to look at her. So that's a real quick way for us to identify them. And then their records are attached to that. So actually on my cell phone and a lot of the co my coworkers on their cell phone, we have an app and we can actually look up those cows. And so like, I can just, where, wherever I am on the farm, I can actually look up a cow and I can tell you how old she is and everything about her whole life, where she was born, who her parents were, if she's ever been sick, how many calves she's had, is all contained to that identification. So that's what those tags are for. So this is just the girls coming in. Um, you can see they want it. They want to be milked. They're they're like, hey, my turn. No, it's my turn. No, it's sometimes they forget to be polite, and we actually have to stop the carousel because two cows will go on at one time because they forget to mind their manners. Kind of like you kids when you go to the lunch line, you forget to mind your manners. Sometimes it's the same thing, and you can see they're really they're wanting to get in there and they're wanting to get milked. Um, and so this naturally funnels them down so that just one cow can go on at a time so that there, there's not a, a wreck. Um, and you can see in here, and I don't know if it's video, but we do have a, like a mister that sprays in here. They've got nice big fans. Um, and it's really funny on really hot days. Um, you can see these cows on the back there. If you just look over the top of the other ones, they're headed back and on really hot days, they don't want to leave the milking barn. They stay because it's nice and cool. Even though it's cool in their barn, but in the sun for just a few seconds. They're like, nope, we're not going to do it. We're just going to hang out in here all day. So um, that's that. And then this, these are my coworkers um, putting, putting the milkers on. So there's an automatic teat wand on this end as well. And you can see the guy in the orange vest, he's actually wiping off each individual teat. So that cleaner is sprayed on there and then he's wiping it off. And then the guy in the yellow vest is now putting the milkers on. And so um, and these guys actually work in a team, there's a team of three. And so they don't do this all day. They'll switch up positions and um, they do, there's floaters that cut that one guy that he walks around and make sure everything's looking good. Um, and here's that teat wand operating. You can see it's sensitive, it's got a sensor. So it does two cows at once and then it'll wait for the carousel and then it senses the next cows exactly in between their legs and then it sprays the udders. So the udder gets, gets cleaned before um, it gets milked and that just helps with um, making sure that there's not, not any manure or anything on there and you can see the pins were really muddy when Katie came to visit and so the cows do have mud on their legs um, but the udder gets nice and clean before we milk it. So, um, and that you can see there that's that job is a lot of work. Um, 
And then over here we got, we go to our, this is our system. So Katie, if you want to just pause this right here real quick, just a second. Um, so everybody, I want you to look at this screen up here. So remember we were talking about ear tags before. So in addition to the big yellow tags, each of the cows has a little electronic button. It's just a, like a white button that goes in the top of their ear. And um, it, they get scanned when they come on the carousel. And then these guys are our breeding team. So we do all artificial insemination. And so we have to know when the cow is in heat, um, when she's ovulating, when it's appropriate to breed her. And so you'll see every cow that's coming around, it's got the stall numbers. And then it's got all of her information. If she's bred or if she's pregnant or if she's um, a fresh cow, that means that she just had a calf read her yet um, and so that's that screen is, is really important and that's all done electronically it's so cool like the guys used to have to do it by hand we had a scanner and they'd have to scan every cow and check and now they can just look up on the screen and they can see all those cows at one time 15 head at one time and so they're reapplying the tail paint so that orange you can go ahead and play here Katie um, the tail paint that he's putting on so when cows are in heat and ready to be bred um, they, they ride each other, they mount each other, and so the, they'll rub that paint off, and that's our first signal that that cow is ready to be bred. And so if it is time for her to breed, then um, the guys will mark her, and then we gate sort them. And so my coworker here, you can see he's working the gate, he's sorting them, so he had cows that needed to get bred, and then cows that don't need to get bred, so he has to swing that gate. Um, and then, um, and then he'll swing it again. So you can see this cow here, she's got that stripe on her leg and this one's got a B and a stripe on her leg. And so she needs to be checked. And so he'll, um, that's how he'll sort them. And then the guys in the back, they'll actually just, and it'll show them in just a second, those cows were being naughty. They weren't wanting to go. Um, but you can see he's experienced. So he just let the other cows go out and he'll get the, the ones that were giving him a hard time in a minute. And so then those cows, those same cows that we just saw get sorted, go back here. And this is my really good friend Trino. He's amazing. And what he's doing is he's actually ultrasounding to see if those cows are pregnant. So I don't know if you can see, but he's got super fun, cool glasses on and they're like computer screens. And that wand that he just put in, put in the cow is an ultrasound. And so he can see if that cow is pregnant or not. And then if she is pregnant, then she gets marked and she'll go to a different pen. So that's a pretty cool job. And I glasses are cool. I think it makes them look like space guys, but that's just me. I grow up. All right, next, next slide. Oh, and then the pins. Yes, we must talk about the pins. Um, so this is, so these pins, you can see the cows, these are the cows that were being milked just now. And so um, this guy is scraping. So he's scraping all the manure into a pile. And then this tractor here with the orange thing on the back, the, I don't know the technical name for it, but I call it the fluffer. And so he's actually gonna fluff these beds here for the cows. Um, so in the mornings when it's cool, the cows will all be laid out on their beds. So here he goes, he's gonna fluff that manure up. And all it does is it just makes it fluffy and then it's soft for the cows to lay on. Um, and so up under the shade is all fluffed and then they have these beds out front that they can lay on. Um, and pins are really, really important in it. You have to make sure your pins are clean because that prevents infection and diseases and all sorts of things like that. So. You can see we really take a lot of time to make sure our pins are nice and clean for our cows. Okay, before you play this one, I want to give them just a minute, Katie. So this is our manure system. So I want you to remember back before we saw the parlor and I talked about the flush system. So all the water that gets used in the parlor to clean, um, it's going to get reused as a foot bath eventually end up out here in this system and then it'll get used in the flush system so it gets pumped from the lagoon to the flush system to, to wash the manure out so go ahead and push play Katie. Um, so this is our manure processing area so there's 
a couple different pieces. So this that's running right now is actually the water out of the lagoon, which Katie will pan to in a minute, but um, this is the water out of the lagoon and it's actually getting filtered a second time before it goes out into the pivots. So there's 20 pivots connected around the farm um, that we can put this liquid manure on. Um, so the manure water, the water that's in the lagoon starts out its life in the flush alleys. Well, actually, it starts out in the parlor as cleaning water and then is used in the flush lanes. And we'll recycle that water numerous times before we put it out on the fields. And then some of the other lagoons around the farm also get pumped over here to this main lagoon. Um, the big tall separator here, Katie, if you'll pan back this way, um, the big tall separator, this is our, so this is our flush system. So it's going to flush down those lines that we just saw in the dairy cow. It's going to flush down that, those lines and take the, the manure with it. And so this is the solids. All, most of the water has been strained out. And then the water, the rest of it goes on down the way there into the ponds and into the lagoons. So we're, we're really recycling everything. Our water gets used a minimum of four times um, before it goes out on the field. Um, and then the solids, so this, this yucky manure solids, actually we use as compost and that will get hauled out to the fields in the fall. Um, so yeah, so the manure system is really important and I know that some people are like, ooh, poop, stinks, but it's actually a great gift um, for us. So some of our fields, the soil is really poor, so it's down closer to the plot. And so some of the soil is really, really terrible. And um, so we're actually able to farm that because we have that manure. And so we're going to haul the manure out of the pens as well in addition to the liquid manure, because manure is a really great fertilizer and it actually works over years. Like if you don't just get the benefits one year, you actually get the benefits of three years from one manure application. So um, so that's pretty much all of Coronado. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if we have any. Um, and then um, Katie, I guess I'll turn it back over to you. Awesome. Well, thank you, Mariah, for giving us a little insight there on Coronado Farms of Riverview Dairy. Um, we will hang on the line here for a couple more minutes. If you have any questions about anything you heard through the tour today or questions about dairy in general, go ahead and type it in the chat box um, and we'll hang out to answer those uh, questions for you. And then um, just a look ahead, next month's virtual tour is going to be with Arizona Queen Bee, and we are going to find our way into the beehives and learn all about bees and pollinating. So we hope you join us for that. But I'll back to the dairy. Back to the dairy. We have a quick question on, um, they want to know why there's two tags. They look like they're identical tags with the numbers, why are yep. they in both ears? Um, so they get two tags because for other reasons, but the main reason is cows like to lose their tags. So um, they not only chew on the fences, they chew on each other's tags. And so um, it's a really easy way. So if they lose one, you still have the other one and then you can replace the other one. So sometimes you'll see, and like in that row, I should have pointed out, sometimes there'll be a tag like in, in the picture here that up and then the other tag will be handwritten because they lost a tag and so it's just and then also you can see from either side so if the tag was only in one ear you'll be able to see if you were on like say the right ear but if but because it's in both you can see from both sides so Excellent. Well, we'll give maybe one more minute for those typers if they have any questions. If you don't have any questions, feel free. We are done with the tour at this time. You can go ahead and jump off and hopefully we'll see you next month for the next round of our virtual ag tour series. All right, Mariah, it looks like people are dropping like flies. So I'm going to take that as we don't have any more questions. I okay. sure appreciate your time um, and showing us uh, into the world of dairy there at Coronado Farms uh, and appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Katie. And thanks for everyone for attending. 
So we'll talk to you guys later and I'll be back for the B1 baby. Awesome, glad to hear it. <laughs> All, All right. right, thank you. Bye.